Welcome back to our series on ADOS calibrations featuring the ADOS Link and the DOS 3000 by Hunter. Today we're going to be doing a calibration on a 2020 Honda Civic and this one just had the windshield replaced. Today we live in a time where if a windshield is cracked and needs replaced, it's not as straightforward as it used to be due to the ADOS systems. This one has a camera mounted right up top and we're going to do a little bit of a different procedure than we've seen before using some of our target stands and some targets set up so that the camera can recognize this. Keep in mind, always check your OEM specifications and procedures before beginning any of these procedures with the DOS 3000 and the ADOS link. Also keep in mind, look for TSBs. Honda is on a growing list of manufacturers right now that are saying do not use aftermarket windshields. We're only requiring the use of OEM material glass when we're replacing a windshield. This one has been replaced by Honda Glass and is ready for calibration. We're gonna walk through those steps now, so stay tuned and watch how this is done. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is hook up our VCI to our DLC under the dash and start communicating with the vehicle. We've got our VCI hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and get into diagnostics on this vehicle. So we're gonna go into diagnostics here, auto ID, have it select it for us and find the VIN and ID the model for us. All right, 2020 Honda Civic Sport, two liter, select that. Please cycle the ignition. And now we're at our home screen and we're gonna select ADOS calibration. We have some options here, front facing camera, front facing radar, and the one that we're going to be dealing with is the front facing camera. This vehicle does not have any currently any lights on the dash indicating any problems with the lane keeping assist systems. But however, because again that the windshield was replaced and the camera was removed from the windshield, calibration or recalibration is required to verify that everything is in working order. So we're gonna have a select that front facing camera and walk through our procedures. And we're gonna go ahead and select static camera aiming. Again, as we've seen in previous videos, we're gonna walk through and it's gonna tell us exactly what we need, how to do it, and walk us through step by step. So the required equipment is our DOS 3000 rack, which is in front of us, wheel clamps, distance marker, target board set Honda 1, and we'll select continue. We have all of that ready to go. It's checking for any DTCs. None were found at this time, and like I said, no lights were on but we still need to make sure that it is calibrated correctly before we return it back to the customer. Calibration preconditions, cycle key off then on, engine running, set parking brake, turn headlights off. And again, perform this calibration when the camera has been removed, when the windshield has been replaced, or alignment or suspension work has been performed. Required preconditions like we've seen in the past, level surface which were on properly aligned with correct tire size and we did set the tire pressure and make sure that that was okay as well uh, no one is in the vehicle all cargo from the vehicle except spare tire and toolkit removed and make sure no objects other than the target board are in front of the vehicle um, when we're doing this and eliminate extra ambient lighting we're in the ideal situation and we have the ideal requirements to do this calibration so we're going to do the guided tour summary uh, it's going to show us setting up the target board, uh, the, the target height, the crossbar, and target boards, which we have not seen in any of our videos yet, um, using the target and the target boards. So we're going to see that done today. So now it's going to ask me to hook up my cameras. Camera 1 and camera 2 are connected. The distance ultimately that our DOS 3000 and our cameras from the front wheel target boards will be 4,000 millimeters. That is specification from Honda. We're going to get there a little bit later. It's just telling us that will be the ultimate distance. We don't need to say change that number or anything else. We're going to leave that as done and press continue. We're going to attach one wheel clamp with the reference board to the left front wheel. And we're going to do the other one to the right rear wheel. So that's a little bit of a different setup that we've seen in the past. I've already attached our target boards to our clamps and we're going to put these in position as where they are asking us to do that. You may have the older style with the actual rim clamp on that. This is the newer updated design that we'll be using that just kind of hangs on the top of the tire now and rests against the side. So we're making no contact with the rim itself. 
If you had the old style, that's okay too, but we do have the newer updated style and we're going to use these. You will see a level bubble level on top of that, so make sure you get that centered just right on that tire when you're putting those on there. So I've got those set up and they are level and in the position that is required, I'm going to press continue. Make sure that you see both of your target boards fully visible in the camera image before you press continue. And I see both of them right now clearly, which is a good sign. So we're going to press continue. It says remove the wheel clamp from the reference board from the front wheel and we're going to put it back to the rear wheel and select continue. Again, you can see that both target boards are visible. The camera is reading them. There are no distorted images, no blurriness or anything to that. So everything looks good. I'm going to press continue. Now it's going to ask us to position our DOS 3000 to the required position displayed on the screen. Remember I said it was 4,000 millimeters and that's what it was told us it ultimately going to be at when we do the actual calibration. And that's what we're setting up now. So we're going to move this right into the position and you just kind of guide this back till you get it lined up. These are very, very touchy and it takes a little bit of practice to get it to line up just right. And once we're in position, you'll see a green check mark saying we're good. So you can see we've got our DOS 3000 in the required position as indicated by the green check mark. Both cameras are still visible and the reflector boards are still, or the target boards are still visible as well. And we can go ahead and press continue now. Use the brakes to make sure it's secure. So we're going to set our brakes on both sides. All right, next step is the tilting lever in the center position, which currently we do have it in two position right now. And then we're going to make sure using our level indicator that we are level using the screw here. We're going to set the pitch of our board to make sure that it's level with the bubble level that's over here in the screw. Not much adjustment needed right there. I like it there. I'm going to keep it in that position and we're going to move on to the next step. So we're going to get our target height set up right now using the crossbar that is on the actual side of the cabinet right here. We're going to grab this off the side of the cabinet and attach it to the front of our frame at 150 centimeters. I am at 150 centimeters on both sides of the cabinet right now. And we're going to verify that I'm level by using the bubble level that is also on the crossbar and get that set up so that we are perfectly horizontal. Our pitch is good. Our horizontal is good. We're at 150 on both sides here. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. Next part is leveling it. We just did that. We, we saved ourselves a step. But again, confirm the left side of the crossbar is at the correct height after leveling. Make sure everything's good, which we are still at our 150 centimeters and everything's good with that. So we're going to move on and install our target boards. So we're going to install target board set Honda set one to unit. We're going to get our Honda boards out. If you look on the back of each board, you will see Honda set one. I do need two of them. You do want to verify that they both say Honda set one on the back of these. And you're going to see that these will attach to the front of the target board in a specific orientation. We're going to do that. And we're also going to install our safety latches on the back of this to make sure that nothing happens and they would accidentally get knocked off by some unforeseen force. Thank you. 
We're going to move on to the next step. Safety cables are installed. All right, before calibration, remove scan tool from platform, disconnect the USB, and step away from the calibration area. Okay, we moved off a little bit away from the calibration area. We're going to press continue. Allow engine to run at idle. So we're going to go ahead and start the car. Okay, we're allowing the engine to run at idle. Calibration in progress. Turn the ignition switch off. And press continue. Back to turning the ignition switch on. Select continue. Calibration successfully completed. We also generated a report that we can print out and show to our customer that the calibration was successful. However, with any calibration that you do, always make sure you test drive it and verify that all components are operating as designed before return it to the customer. As for now, our 2020 Honda Civic is successfully calibrated. We're going to run it down the road, make sure everything's working, and return it back to our customer. We just got back from our test drive. Our lane detection system is working great, picking up the lane markers as designed and letting us know if we veered off. We can safely return this back to the customer as the system is operating correctly. No DTs are stored, no lights have come on the dash. Join us next time when we'll get into another ADOS calibration and thanks for watching. <laughs>